All right, welcome back to Virginia This Morning. Greg McQuaid here at the Virginia Museum of History and Culture, a place that you used to know as the Virginia Historical Society, but they've had a name change, but also a fascinating new exhibit that I've been waiting for a long time to see. And you will be just blown away by what they have here. Jamie Boskett right here, the president and CEO of the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. Uh, great to see you again, Jamie. Good Thanks for you. having us. First of all, let's get to the name change. Uh, yes. A quick name change. People will see some new signage outside. Why, why the change? The change is to make sure we're conveying our chief purpose. We are a museum. We are the peepers of the Virginia flame, the story of the Commonwealth. We want to make sure people understand that, make sure they know that they should come here and visit us, particularly for exhibits like this. It's incredible. A great story to tell about the Great War, World War I. Tell us how long this has been in the works and what sort of fascinating artifacts and repros that we have here under one roof. Oh, we've been working on this for months and we're so thrilled to finally have it come to being here with this national perspective in World War I America and the Virginia specific perspective in the Commonwealth the Great War exhibit combined. Tell the story through these wonderful artifacts as you mentioned, like this behind me. This is just, this is one of the biggest objects that's in the show, but it's an important one. Tell us about the ambulance. Oh, this ambulance. This is an example, where, you know, we'll talk about horses, but horses and vehicles come together in World War I. This is a huge shift in the technology used for warfare. This ambulance is an exact replica of what was used. In fact, Ernest Hemingway, one of the great stories that's told here, he was an ambulance driver in World War I. Fantastic story. We're moving on. We have the artifacts, not just of metal, but of cloth. This one fascinates me here in this exhibit space. It is a uniform worn by a World War I soldier. Tell us about this, Jamie. That's right. Many uniforms here. This one in particular is special. Worn by one of the soldiers, the brave soldiers, that was part of the Lost Battalion. The Meuse-Argonne Offensive, which was the largest U.S. military offensive in history. 1.2 million soldiers participated in that offensive. The Lost Battalion was trapped. They were cut off from the rest of their troops, and for days they were surrounded by the enemy troops. This gentleman returned home to Virginia. 100 years on, 1918 was the end of the Great War, the war to end all wars. Why do you think it gets overshadowed? Well, many wars come after because it, in fact, is not the war to end all wars, but it was transformative, transformative in Virginia, for the world, it was transformative. Look at even specifically here in the Commonwealth, the military installations we have today, all a product of World War I. Think about our global presence. We become a superpower truly in earnest because of this war. There's also what I found fascinating. It's so personal, this exhibit, Jamie. There was a trench whistle. So a person used that to maybe call his troops over the line and into no man's land. That's right, and we wanted it to feel that way. There are profiles throughout both of these exhibits to help make it feel human. These people sacrificed. They sacrificed their lives in some cases. And even the smallest objects can tell that story in a really meaningful way. Tell us about the wharf exhibit that we have over our shoulders right here because all the activity wasn't just on the front lines. There was the home front as well, Jamie, and it was bustling right here on the shores of Virginia. Absolutely. Newport News and the Tidewater of Virginia was the second largest point of departure for not only troops leaving for World War I, but horses, 600,000 plus horses were shipped out of Virginia to go uh, to, the, to the European front. You know, and sadly, many thousands of soldiers and those horses never returned. They never returned. 3,700 specifically in Virginia, troops that went abroad and didn't make it home to their families. Jamie, one thing that is arresting here in this exhibit is a deck chair from the Lusitania. Tell us about the importance of the Lusitania and how lucky we are to have it here under under this roof. Oh, that's right. And, and of the variety of objects, from the, the jar where they pulled the national draft to this chair, as you mentioned, the Lusitania was one of those sparks that helped rally people around the idea that America might, in fact, enter the war. The Lusitania, in particular, 124 Americans died when the Germans bombed that ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Jamie, how is this brought together? And why is it so important for Virginians here in Richmond and really the Commonwealth as a whole come to see this. That's right. Our purpose is to tell meaningful stories about Virginia. And this is right at the top of the list right now as we celebrate the centennial. This is our last best chance, perhaps, to make sure it doesn't get forgotten. And so we're, we're thrilled to be and honored to have one of the largest exhibits in the country right now to commemorate this centennial. And Jamie, uh, there is a special offer for military That's veterans right. and active military That's as well. Right. And of course there should be. All military, active, retired, their families, free admission to these exhibits and to the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. And that's of course all thanks to the lead sponsors of these exhibits, Boeing 
we're really thrilled. Jamie, it's, we're thrilled to be here, and congratulations on this fascinating topic. This is um, World War I here at the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. We have some information right here. It's up on your screen. It runs through July 29th. Admission is just $10, but as you heard Jamie say, all active and retired military and their families, it's a free exhibit. If you'd like to get some more information about this exhibit and the newly renamed Virginia Museum of History and Culture, just go to our website at wtvr.com slash VTM. Can't wait to put the microphone down and explore this exhibit. Jamie, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, you too.